Welcome to a new video about LC filter design. This is our example number one where we consider the elliptic response filters. We will discuss in this example the low pass filter design for this specific LC ladder filter configuration. We will see the specific steps for this response type step by step in our calculation. Also verify these in our SPICE simulations. So let's look at our example. The objective is as said the design and elliptic response filter. It's also called the cover, which is actually the inventor of this response. It must be a passive LC ladder filter configuration for this low pass filter. And we also need to use 50 ohm double terminated shunt input circuit. Now what does all this mean? So we have here the generalized filter, which must be designed in this case. And there is the source resistor here and a load resistor here. They are all 1 ohm, so they are normalized. We need to scale it up later to the specific value, which is 50 ohm. So that means our magnitude scaling factor must be 50. That is for later. We have here the specifications as similar actually uh, for the Butterworth response and also the other response filters we have discussed in the previous examples. You see here the maximum passment ripple, which must be here in this case 1.2494 dB. And this is in the old literature also called the reflection coefficient of 50%. Now the minimum stop and attenuation must be 25 dB. The passive frequency is 1 MHz. The stop and frequency is 1.5 MHz. So how do we now design this specific filter for these specifications? And then of course the elliptic response. You can repeat complete process for let's say the Chepiche or Butterworth or Bessel response, it doesn't matter, but you need to use the right coefficients from the tables. So the solutions really require again are tables from the literature. Now for our first step, we go to the filter order. That is always the you know, one of the important steps. So the N, and for that we first look at the transition sharpness we require. Now that is determined by the ratio of the stop and frequency and the passment frequency. That is given by this omega r for the sharpness and we have here the stop end frequency over the passment frequency. Of course it doesn't matter if you have here radians per second or hertz so in omegas or in f's it doesn't matter so there's a ratio here and in this case it's just 1.5. So we need at max a transition of 1.5 and from our table we need to then determine that also the minimum stop and attenuation is achieved and also other parameters. So the complete, the this large table will illustrate what we need to do. And we have here for elliptic response, the filter order of three. You see here a couple of data. First, this uh, heading is important because this is the ripple. We have three different ripples here or three different reflection coefficients in all literature. You see here 0 0.0988 dB for ripple. Another ripple here and also our ripple which is 1.2494 dB of of course also the row of 50%. Here we see the A minimum so the what you achieve actually if you use this transition sharpness. For example if you have a transition sharpness of 3.0716 if that is for example enough for you then you can achieve an A minimum of approximately let's say 48 dB or 40 I mean 47.8 dB and you need to use then these coefficients for your uh, filter but in this case we have 1.5 so we need to go down 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 all the way down and also look at where we find this 1.5 in this case looking at the specification we require a third order as set and we need here this part for the transition sharpness and looking at our right column here we need this part now you can say which one is now what we want now if I now zoom in in this part this specifically the row 20 up to 23 which is actually given here you see the transition sharpness and also the stop and attenuation you achieve and also the coefficients for C1 C3 C2 and L2 they are the normalized values in our filter we will see shortly now if i go for let's say to start to certify the requirements for both the 
transition sharpness and the minimum stop pen attenuation of 25 dB, I can choose between 21 and 22, the row 21 and 22, because if this is uh, less than 1.5, that is fine, but this also must be at least 25. So 1.5 at max, this one, and at least this one, 25. So we have now two specifications we need to meet. So we have here 1.4945, so that is okay. And this is 26.14, so that is also okay. So this is a good candidate. The 22, row 22 is also fine. But if you go to 23, the sharpness is fine, but this is now 24.79, which is less than 25, which is not okay. And if I go up, I can create more attenuation, but then the sharpness is larger, so it is not anymore what we wanted. So again, the only possible solutions are here row 21 and 22. Okay, so these two are available. So it doesn't matter which were, uh, one you take actually, theoretically, but it depends of course on the application also available components. Okay, bringing up this table here and now also selecting one of them, I will just select this bolt one, which is here made bolt, which is then the row 21. So I will take this one. Okay, moving on, and then also considering more in detail what the circuit is. This is another circuit we will use. You see the C1 here, C2, L2, and C3. C1 and C3, they are, have the same value normalized, so it is 1.8529 farads. C2 will be then 0.5114 farads, and L2 will be then 0.7025 henrys. And we get now this sharpness and also minimum 26 dBs approximately. So let's see then what we get. And now before we move on, let's also calculate or determine our frequency uh, scaling factor, which is really simple actually this one, because this is just what we have as our passive frequency in radians per second. So you just do two pi times the uh, one megahertz. That will give you our scaling factor here, frequency scaling factor. And that will be then used later to calculate the scaled component values. Now, step three is indeed that these scaled component values. Now, for that, we use the prime. So you see the primes here, prime everywhere, actually a prime. We scale up actually all these components to the practical values and also according to the specifications. You see here the C1 prime and all the other uh, component values. So let's go one by one. How do we go from now C1 to C1 prime, which is then C1 prime O is equal to C1, normalized value here, divided by the magnitude scaling factor and the frequency scaling factor. Now, frequency scaling factor is determined in step two, and the magnitude scaling factor is 50. Why? Because we need to go from one ohm to 50 ohm, which is given in the objective. That's why this is 50. Now, when you do the calculation here, you get now 5.898 nanofarads. The next one is the C2 prime, which is here. The normalized value of that one and the actual value of C2 prime is here. So we again use the coefficient from the table and similar to actually what we did. And you get now here 1.628 nanofarads. So everything's actually the same here, only changes here the coefficient. Let's now go to the L2 prime, which is now given by this formula using the L2 from the table and the KM and the KF. This is also what we have discussed in the previous examples. You see here that what we have is 5.590 micro Henry's. Now the final one is the C3, which is exactly the same as C1 prime. So it is the exact same coefficient. So again, 5.898 nanofarads. The only two components letters are the RS prime and RL prime. They're actually really simple because it's just the KM 50 times one just will be 50 ohm, the other one is also 50 ohm. So we have now all components for this circuit, so all six components are now determined. Let's then bring them here together. These are the components as a summary, and now also bring up the design circuit in the simulator. The first one is our prototype low-pass filter circuit for this electric response. You see the coefficients here, C1, C2, L2, and C3. You're just looking at the table. And these are the normalized, uh, I mean the scaled up values we just determined. They're all shown here. Okay, let's see now what we have from the simulations because we need to verify our circuit. 
This is the body plot showing only the magnitude. You see here some values and some labels, so we need to go through this one by one. And this was the circuit we have designed. So let's go one by one. We see here the low frequency gain is approximately minus 6.02 dB. Why? Because at this DC for this circuit, the gain will be 0.5 because we have a 50 ohm here and 50 ohm there. So you get a 50 ohm over 100 together. That will give you a gain of 0.5. So 20 log of 0.5 will give you approximately minus 6.02 dB. Okay, that's the first one. The second label is about this pass band frequency. We need to look at the 1 megahertz, and you see here that the gain is dropping from this baseline to minus 7.2698 dB. The difference between this baseline and the value here in the gain is shown here, which is then 1.2492 dB. And that is less than what we maximum have here. So we, this is the maximum allowed passband ripple, and we have more uh, less than that. So that will be fine. So again, we achieve the passband ripple specifications. You also see actually that there is a ripple in the passband. You see the ripple here, but there's also a ripple here in the stop band. That is actually the characteristic of an epileptic response. So electric response actually have the ripple in the passband and also ripple in the stop band. But the Chebyshev type 1 response will have only a ripple in the passband. And the Chebyshev type 2 or inverse Chebyshev response will have only a ripple in the stop band. And this is now the combination of two. So we get more, let's say, ripple or everywhere, but they get the least order using this elliptic response filters. Also, you see the valley here in the peak. And this part here is also going down at, uh, from the baseline. To this value which is less than what we have here for the maximum passment ripple okay moving on to the next specification is the stop band uh, attenuation or stop and frequency you see here this value of minus 32.56 db at this 1.5 megahertz again an important uh, information here and we go down from this baseline where we have here an attenuation of 26.50 4 dB approximately and we needed 25 dB so that is again achieved so we have at least what we wanted at this 1.5 megahertz now as an extra information we have also here the cutoff frequency the calculation of that is not given in this example but you see there is a cutoff frequency of 1.0526 megahertz here in this example so we can say that all the specifications we needed to have are met and uh, we can say the design is complete. So see you next time in another video. Take care.